webinar of 2021. Um, so my name is Kira, and I'm a PhD student at the Cambridge Institute for Music Therapy Research. I would like to thank you all for joining us today for this webinar, uh, setting up a music therapy training course in the northeast of Thailand. This is by Dr. Porn Fan Kane and Porn Fan, and this is hosted by the Cambridge Institute for Music Therapy Research. Uh, before we start, I'm going to quickly introduce you to some of the Zoom webinar features. So firstly, only the speakers can share their audio and video. And attendees, please do use the chat to introduce yourselves. Um, if you are using social media, also please use the hashtag Simta webinar and follow us on Twitter at Simta underscore ARU. And also after the webinar, we will be sending you a link to our survey. So please do fill out the survey to inform future events. So I will now hand you over to Professor Helen O'Dell Miller, uh, the director of the Cambridge Institute for Music Therapy Research, and she will introduce our speaker today. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Good evening. It's fantastic to see so many. I can see listed people working all over the world, many colleagues. Um, and I also wanted to thank you, Kira. Um, we have a support team here, and I'd like to thank them all for their support on the Zoom webinar. Um, so first, I would like to say something about the Cambridge Institute for Music Therapy Research, in case you're new um, to this. So we're based at Anglia Ruskin University, which also houses music therapy and drama therapy master's courses, and we undertake many projects and research um, with partners from all over the world, some of whom are here, I can see, uh, specialising in healthy ageing, music therapy for neurodisability for adults and children, music and brain research, research on music therapy with children and families, and music therapy for people with um, living with mental health issues. Um, and I'm really pleased to say as well that we've just heard that we the university has been awarded a Queen's Award for Research and Innovation in Music Therapy with a focus on music therapy for people living with dementia, um, but acknowledging the work that's been happening here over 25 years. And this is um, something that we want to share with you because it's an award for everyone. So most of you have worked with us, or many of you have, and this is something for the whole community and recognition of the research and innovative work that we all do together. So I think that's quite enough from me now, but thank you all very much. Uh, and um, I have to say that Dr. Porn Pan Kain and Porn Pan couldn't uh, join us in person today, um, but has pre-recorded her talk and also pre-recorded answers to some questions that were already posed by people who'd read the abstract. So we'll, we'll use our imagination and creativity in um, conjuring up her presence here. And we're going to share with you in a minute her pre-recorded talk, and then Kira and I will also then discuss the questions we've already received and hopefully some from you who are listening that we can pass on to her or if they're more general we might be able to answer them and there may be um, questions about for example some of the research she did when she was here. Um, I have great pleasure in introducing this lecture by Dr Kainam Hainan and she currently works as a lecturer in the Faculty of Fine and Applied Arts in Konkine University, Thailand. She completed her PhD at Anglia Ruskin University in 2015. And in this presentation, she presents how a music therapy training course was set up at Konkine University and also a little bit about her research leading up to that. Um, in the abstract, she stated that the course will be the first music therapy training course in the region, and the first one outside of Bangkok, so there are others, um, but this is outside of the capital city of Thailand. 
she highlights challenges and opportunities in her talk. Um, many of you will have had the chance to read her biography, but um, in addition to what I've already said, she undertook her master's degree in music therapy from the New Zealand School of Music and completed her PhD um, at Anglia Ruskin, and she has experience with many populations. So without further ado, I will hand back to Kira, um, who's going to share her talk with you. And she did apologize for not being able to attend in person relating to the time zone, um, but has kindly shared her presentation with you. Right, um, can everyone see that? Is that okay? Check the sound. Oh, I... Hopefully. It's quite small. Does it go any larger? Yes, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay, so we will now begin. Hello, everyone. My name is Pon Pan Gen Am Pon Pan. Thank you very much for having me today. And I am very pleased to be back in AIU atmosphere again. Due to the time zone difference, I cannot present this on the day. However, thanks to Kiera and Nina, who initiated the ideas of recording the video presentation and share with you the story of setting up a music therapy training course in Northeast of Thailand. Since I finished my PhD from Anchor Raskin University in 2014, I returned to Thailand and has been working at Faculty of Fine Applied Arts in Konkan University. Konkan University was found in 1964 and it was the first university established in Northeastern Thailand and remained the oldest and the largest university in the region. At the moment, there are approximately 38,000 students and more than 300 academic programs available in this university. Since I started working here, I have learned that there is a growing interest nationally and locally in this profession. However, there are only about 50 music therapists in Thailand and most of them work in Bangkok. I am the only music therapist in the, this region so it is very difficult to provide enough music therapy to people who may benefit from music therapy. I have been providing music therapy service once a week in Sinakalin Hospital, the university hospital, in outpatient psychiatric department, working with elderly and with adults with psychiatric difficulties. Sinakalin Hospital has provided medical service as the super tertiary hospital for the northeast region of Thailand, where one third of the population live here. All specialties and subspecialties are available at resources for services, research and education. From my experience, providing music therapy at this hospital indicate compliance and need for music therapy, not only in the psychiatry department, but also in other departments too. Also, there are other settings that music therapy will be beneficial to. For example, a special education center where I did my clinical work during my PhD and supported my undergrad students, provide music activities to the children with special needs. Also, there is a special education autistic research center which is part of the Faculty of Education, where one of my students provides music activity to the children with ASD as part of her postgrad thesis in music education. Also at the moment, there are few postgrad students under my supervised are interested to do their research related to music as therapy, such as providing music class to the elderly to develop their quality of life, 
developing music activities to develop social skills in children with special needs and conducting music activity to improve the quality of life of a bedridden patient. Furthermore, I have been providing introduction to music therapy module to the third year undergrad music students. This module mainly aims to provide an introduction to the field of music therapy and to orient the student to clinical application of music as therapy. Having the chance to teach this introduction to music therapy module, allow me to share about music therapy discipline to the music students. Although this, doesn't, uh, this uh, module does not produce a music therapist, but the modules aim to expand the student's perspective on how music can be used in different contexts other than to perform as a musician. From these student interests, I believe that music therapy training course in Kongan University will have very good potential to get interest to many future students. In Thailand, the first training course was established in Mahidon University in Bangkok in 2013. And another training course start in 2021 at Chula Lumpur University in Bangkok as well. Konkan University will be providing the first MA Music Therapy training course in Thailand outside Bangkok. And this program is a multidisciplinary program which I invite lecturers from medical, nursing and dentistry faculty to be program committees. In order to develop this training course together, so having expertise from different perspectives is very important and unique in this program. I would like to give a brief introduction um, to my colleagues, the committee of this program. Firstly, uh, I would like to introduce um, Assistant Professor Dr. Prathavut uh, Watanasab. Uh, he is the lecturer from um, faculty of medicine. He has introduced music into clinical practice for cancer patients during the last 10 years and conducting some research on applying music in various medical settings. He has also used music in med medical education and he is a former president of the International Association for Music and Medicine. Uh, the second one is the assist assistant professor, Dr. Nichapat Puttikamin. She is a lecturer in faculty of nursing and she is specialized in adult nursing. Her experience of working and supervising the nurse students on the field will be able to nurture and able to guide um, the student in music therapy program to work within the multidisciplinary team. Our last committee is Assistant Professor Dr. Suwadi Aranchod, who is not only a dentist, but she is also a passionate educator as she received her PhD in education. She is very keen on contemplative education. From her expertise, the student in the program can learn to develop self-understanding as well as analytical and critical capacities and nurture skills for engaging positively with others. This program emphasizes on holistic approach, which provides an in-depth understanding of patients and their various needs of care. Holistic care by addressing patient physical, emotional, social and spiritual needs, restore their balance and enable them to deal with their illness consequently improve their lives. A holistic approach means to provide support that looks at the whole person, not just one aspect of that person's life. The support should also consider their physical, emotional, social, and spiritual well-being. It has been a long process to get an official approved from Kongan University and to start any new program in the University. Firstly, in order to make sure that I still keep the core music therapy disciplinary in this program, 
I work closely with experienced music therapy professor Emilia Orfield, who has been my supervisor since my PhD. And as music therapy is to an infant state of development in Thailand, and also music therapy knowledge mainly developed in Western country. So in the beginning of February 2020, I invite Emilia to work with me as a as a visiting scholar in Konkan University for three months. Um, she helped me to prepare the program description, um, which include um, um, the objective of the program, the study plan, the course description, and she helped me to set the, uh, the set the important music therapy core content and um, the module uh, description and the way I should assess the students. Uh, anyway, she did not only uh, came and work on the music therapy program at the time, she also came and give many lectures to my undergrad students, um, to the music therapy student in Mahidon, or the public um, lecture to people who interest in music therapy. So I also learned from her the way she, she, she teach music therapy. Although this program has a lot of input from Emilia Ovild, but she did not try to put all the Western concept into this context. She encouraged me to consider about the context need and how to incorporate other resources I have here in Kongen City. After I had the first draft of all the core study plan that I worked with Emilia, I consult with other committees in the program to incorporate the idea to strengthen the program and try to finish up other part in the uh, course description. Then we send this program description to three external committees, which we gain some comments. Um, for example, there was one external committee's comment that the program should include understanding of human response to music in cognitive, affective and physiological domain to the brain and neuroscience. So we have a module called Principle of Music Therapy and Music Neuroscience, which um, we plan to invite guest lecturer from Faculty of Medicine and also Assistant Professor Dr. Patrwood will be the one who share their knowledge and experience to our students. And last month, the University Curriculum Committee just approved our document but there are some comments that um, they asked us to respond before the program description will be sent to the academic senate and then to the university council. I really hope that uh, we will get official approval from the university council very soon so we can open for the applicants for 2022 academic year, which will start the new semester in July 2022. This program is by semester academic system. The study program for one academic year is composed of two regular semester. There will be a minimum 15 week study period in each semester. We have five year as mission plan, which is in the first two years. Uh, the program aim to have six students each year. And after that, we will have eight students. According to the limitation of music therapy lecturers, I think it would be more manageable in terms of clinical placement supervisors and thesis or independent study supervisor availability. Although in this program, I invite three other lecturers from other faculties, but they all have existing workloads. So it has to be very careful of sorting out more workload for them in this program. This music therapy training course will prepare students to work in variety of clinical settings. Qualified students will be treating vulnerable people and must be trained to get a high standard. The course has a duty to prepare students to work responsibly, professionally, and safely. During the course, students will focus on four main areas clinical musical repertoire and improvisation skills, theoretical medical and clinical knowledge, theoretical music therapy knowledge and clinical placement, 
And in the second year, students will set up a small music therapy investigation that link to their clinical placement and write a thesis while continue to focus on the four area that I just mentioned. The first area is clinical musical repertoire and improvisation skill. In this area, the student will develop the musical repertoire for various clinical groups, develop their clinical improvisation skills, and improve their confidence of using their first instrument in therapeutic context. Not only that, I will also integrate the use of local instrument and with the advantage of developing this program as part of the Faculty of Fine Applied Art, undergrad music, dance, drama, and art teaching staff will be able to help with many aspects of this teaching area. And the students who will be part of the music therapy program will be mature MA students. So I expect that they will also learn specific musical technique from one another and then um, particularly teach and support the first year students when they become second year students. In this program, besides theoretical music therapy knowledge, there are modules that bring related approach and theories that can be a good foundation for the students to be able to work in multidisciplinary teams. Moreover, this music therapy training program is developed not only from the music therapy discipline, but also include related discipline, disciplines such as nursing, medical, and contemplation education. It doesn't mean that I lessen any importance of the core of music therapy theory or practical skills that has to be in the program. In contrary, I believe that to successfully work in the medical context or to be able to understand the needs of the client from other disciplinary perspective, the student should extend the understand, their understanding um, of related theories. In this area, um, it aims to provide a student various aspects of healthcare, principle of holistic care, knowledge of healthcare services, um, working with multidisciplinary team with, within a wide range of clinical setting, non-technical skills to develop leadership, teamwork, communication skills to effectively communicate to the clients in various backgrounds for their well-being. In the third focus, theoretical music therapy knowledge. This part of the program mainly involves the principle of music therapy, development of techniques and music therapy skills to work with varied needs of the clients. Understand the work of a music therapist is a multidisciplinary team. Also, the student will have opportunities to understand the application um, of music therapy related theoretical knowledge, ethical um, procedure in music therapeutic intervention and music therapy models. Um, clinical placement is very important component in all music therapy training program. As I mentioned earlier that we have some connections in the hospital in some departments, special education center and ASD research center so and this context will be valuable when setting up the clinical placement for students attending the uh, Kongan uh, University Music Therapy MA course. Each student will be on clinical placement for two days a week and will be placed in at least two contrasting clinical areas during their training. This clinical work will be supervised on a weekly basis at the university by the music therapy teaching staff. As a trend of lifelong learning is coming strong in Thai education, the university curriculum committee suggests us to have some modules that open to an undergraduate student to enroll and keep the credit. Non-degree programs typically refer to academic programs in which students are not following classes to earn a degree. People who decide to follow non-degree program usually do it out of personal or professional interests. They are lifelong learners who want to improve skills for their self-development or work-related purposes. So in this program, 
there will be some modules in the program open to non-degree students. This provides chances to students who are interested in music therapy, but not sure if they want to train and become a music therapist at that point. So they can enroll in some basic module they, uh, and they can gain more insight before deciding to do the music therapy degree. And this module um, can encourage more understanding about music therapy profession too. This student may come from any uh, faculty such as faculty of nursing, education, fine art, and this group of students may later return to the program and do other modules and complete the MA course. Because I am the only music therapist in this region, and learning from only one music therapist can be very limited in terms of experiences in working with only some clients group and the approach that I use. Therefore, involving music therapists in Bangkok and inviting music therapy lecturer from other two universities in Bangkok to give some lectures will be very helpful to the students in this program. So they can learn from the music therapists who have various experiences in various group of clients. Also, if there is a case that the student want to do their placement in Bangkok, the connections with the music therapist in Bangkok will be made. So the student can expose to various situation and experience. Also, having the student from all three university meet up and share the experience while doing the placement can be very useful. Involving resources outside Konkan University is one of my main strategy to run this program. This is not only to make sure that the student can learn from the music therapists who have different experience working in different clients group and have different way of working, but I also hope this shared resource can develop to the supportive atmosphere between music therapy training program and between music therapists in Thailand. And once the course is running, it will be very important to regularly communicate with other training courses in Thailand so that the music therapists working on the different courses or different facilities as well as students can support each other and learn from one another. The course leaders working together in this way will be in a strong position to contribute to the establishment of the music therapy profession in Thailand. As I train in Western culture and music therapy in Thailand is still in an infant stage of development. There is very few music therapy material that conducted based on Thai context. In this program, we depend much on knowledge and research from countries where music therapy is much more well developed. So it is very important to aware of cultural sensitivity issue. Uh, thanks to Napak Pakdi Satipara, a music therapy lecturer at Jualongkorn University and a music therapy PhD student from University of Melbourne. He shared with me the result from the discussion with a group of Thai music therapists and music therapy students about how Thai culture has informed um, our music therapy practice and how they have integrated the knowledge with practice in Thai culture. So I would like to bring some points uh, that I also experienced this issue a lot during my music therapy clinical work in Thailand. Firstly, seniority. In Thai culture, we place people who are older, older than us at the higher position and we have to treat them with respect. This has been the value of Thai culture for a very long time and has so much influence on how we approach and how we understand the clients. People here expect us to be humble and respectful towards those who are older, even just a few years older. Secondly, being considerate in the way that I don't want to bother you make you feel bad, make you feel tired, or create inconvenience for you. Although it's not very kind, but it can also be difficult for music therapists who have to ass assess and evaluate the client's improvement 
or their well-being or their needs of music therapy. If the client being so considerate to the music therapist, they may try to hide their true needs or true feeling. For example, in the session, the music therapist sing a song which remind the client of bad memory, but the client doesn't want the music therapy to feel bad. So he keep that feeling to himself and continue singing with music therapy. Or the client may really want or even need the music therapy. But when the music therapist asks him to participate, he refused to attend um, because he doesn't want to create more work for music therapist. I also experienced the client being so considerate during my clinical work. Um, for example, um, when I asked the parent of the child I work with to comment on the music therapy work or um, ask them what they like to improve in the session, I found it was challenging to get the parents or the family members to tell me what they thought. Um, if they have a different opinion, they tend to keep to themselves because uh, it is Thai culture, like to be critical can be seen as impolite thing to do. And we tend to compromise rather than having an agreement. Thirdly, spiritual belief. Buddhism is a very important part of Thai people life. One of the main philosophies that the Thai Buddhists strongly hold on to is doing good will bring good and doing bad will bring will get bad. In some part of Thailand, people believe that if people do bad things, a ghost or supernatural being will punish them. So they have had luck or an unhappy fate. In Thailand, sickness or disability can be considered to be the punishment for their own or their parents' misbehavior in their previous life. This belief lead the families or the patient themselves to think that in their previous life, they did something bad and this could be a cause of the disability they have in this present life. Therefore, many parents or family members of people with special needs tend to blame themselves and feel guilty. So parents or other family members may overprotect their sick child in, their lifetime, in this lifetime. Um, in, an opposite, in an opposite way, some parents or family members choose to neglect the child because they think uh, the child him, him or herself did something bad in the previous life. Thai Buddhist caregiver also follow the path of Buddhist teaching to take care of their family members who have serious illness and the caregiver believed that they could collect merit by helping others, meditating or giving care to their family members and consequently they could achieve a better life in the next life. Some caregiver believed that according to the law of karma in this life they were repaying their relative who suffer from illness from doing harmful things to them in the past life. Um, Buddhist teaching also influenced the way Thai family cope with their stress, which result from their family member having illness or special needs. When Thai Buddhist people face difficult situations, which ca they cannot change, they tend to accept, be patient, understand and accommodate. Lastly, the way Thai people perceive Thai traditional music. We all have been taught since we were young that Thai traditional music has been viewed as sacred. I used to learn Thai traditional music when I was young. I had taught to pay respect every time I played the instrument. We believe that an instrument is our teacher, so it is not just an instrument or just music, but it is something sacred and has been passed on from higher, very uh, high respectful teacher from generation to generation. It has a very strict and delicate rule we need to follow. We need to be very respectful, follow the tradition. Um, so it, there's not much room for creativity or expression. Um, the challenge of using Thai traditional music is to 
um, how to simplify or allow expressiveness in the way that's still respectful or to respectfully participate and immerse with the positive spiritual belief that come with it. This is just the beginning of setting up the music therapy training course in northeastern of Thailand. I believe that running the music therapy program can be difficult, but I truly believe that it will also be rewarding to have more music therapists around the area. Although Konkan University may have a very limited resources in terms of human resources that had experience of training music therapists, but to working collaboratively with other lecturers from healthcare faculty who can fill the gap in many ways, such as um, filling the gap in adding relevant medical knowledge and field work supervision or research skill. Also, consulting with experienced music therapy professor to keep the core of music, uh, music therapy knowledge is necessary because we aim to train the students up to the international standard, but also have our own identity to be uh, to be able to work suitably in Thailand. Also, connecting with other music therapists in Bangkok can extend the student perspective by learning from many music therapists in Bangkok too. I really believe that working collaboratively with the resource available around here will be able to nurture our students to become a quality music therapist with their own uniqueness that enable them to work professionally. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Okay. So um, thank you, Paul and Pan. I'm sure she'll listen to this part of the discussion. Um, and as I said at the beginning, and I can see there's one question in the Q&A now. Um, obviously, if there are things that we can't answer, we'll pass them on to her. And she's very happy then to answer questions and contact people if you're happy to share your details. Um, but for now, as I said, we planned um, a Q&A session um, to be kicked off by some pre-questions that were posed from people who read the abstract. So I'll hand over to Kira. We're going to take it in turns to read out the question and then give the answer that um, Paul Pan was able to give, although she couldn't be here. So over to you, Kira. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just wanted to say as well, uh, well done to Paul Pan. Her work's very interesting. I'm very excited to see the future of music therapy in Thailand. And yes, we, we will send her the recording so she will read the comments. But yes, to our first question. So the question is, how common is music therapy practice in healthcare in Thailand? So I know this was touched upon in the presentation. So um, I will just give her a response. So Pwom Pan says, Thai people have long history about using music for healing. Therefore, we are familiar with using music in developing well-being. Also, music is used in healthcare by nurses, doctors and other healthcare professions. The term music therapy in Thailand is widely used, but the understanding of it can vary. Um, people here in Thailand still confuse between music therapy and music for well-being or music for health. And she also says that from her experience with working in healthcare contexts, she feels that people are very much aware of the benefits of music and music therapy, but not many people understand how music therapists work and how the music therapists view the client's response to music. And the music therapy service, which is provided by the therapist, is not very common in Thailand, as we heard in the presentation. And she goes on to say there are only three full-time music therapists working in the healthcare context, and they mostly work in well-known hospitals in Bangkok. So um, if we go to the next question, Helen. Yes, um, I think despite, you know, the setting up of something new, I think there are some familiar themes running along um, still actually in an established music therapy culture as we have in some countries that um, there need to be constant discussion and thought about the boundaries between the music for health, music teaching, music therapy, and that's 
interesting that that she raised that. Um, so here's a question um, which Paul Pan has answered, which is that um, so you undertook research with parents and children for your PhD. Can you briefly summarize your PhD? How's your research informed A, your clinical practice and B, the development of the music therapy training course? Again, which she covered, but she's given a bit more information here. Um, Paul Pan said, my PhD aims to explore the parents or other family members' experiences in participating in music therapy sessions with their children with special needs. In order to understand the parents or other family members' experiences, in participating in music therapy sessions with their children with special needs. I provided 24 music therapy sessions to six children and their family members. So I should add here, because I was on the supervisory team, which was led by Amelia Oldfield, as she mentioned before, that although Paul Pan undertook her PhD at Anglia Ruskin University, she undertook the clinical work that she gathered the data from in Thailand. I, moreover, there were three interviews with the carers focusing on their experiences using music with their children during the research process. From the interview analysis, there are 28 themes that emerged under five categories, namely the carers' expectations of the music therapy, the carers' experience of seeing their children in the music therapy sessions, the carers' experiences of seeing themselves in sessions, the carer's experiences of reviewing the video recordings from the music therapy sessions, and fifthly, the, the carer's experience of using music at home following attending the sessions. So it can be summarized that music therapy made a positive impact on the children and their carers. The findings highlighted how the music therapy enhanced social and communication skills for the children, Moreover, involving their carers in the sessions enabled them to have positive experiences with their children. And these experiences led the carers to see and interact with their children differently. So the carers involved parents, but also some child carers and also grandparents and other family members. I've just added that because I um, remember that from her research. The findings suggest the ways to work with the carers in the therapeutic process and how to encourage the carers to use music at home with their children. So answering the question about how the influences is, have, have, have borne out in the future work, Paul Pan says, um, during my clinical work, I emphasise involving the family in the music therapy session and encourage them to actively participate in sessions if they can. From the experience during my PhD, I can see myself in various roles when I involve the family in the sessions. I'm not always the leader of the session. Sometimes it's more important to encourage the family member to lead. And I, as a music therapist, facilitate them and create music to encourage the interaction between the client and their family members. My research has informed the development of the music training, music therapy training course, so this was the second part of the question, um, mainly in the aspect of working with the multidisciplinary teams. This may not be a new idea, but from working with the carers during my PhD, I've learned about the importance of involving perspectives from others. Especially in my situation where there's no music therapist in the area, Therefore, it's a good opportunity to develop the training course with other professions so the students will have chances to learn from other professions perspective and how they approach the clients, how they assess and evaluate the client's development. This can be the advantage of students here to be able to integrate the music therapy knowledge and use the skills from other people in the multidisciplinary team. And before I hand back to Kira, I want to just go to the Q and A, um, where there's only one question, which is understandable because obviously Paul Pan can't answer your questions directly. Um, and I think that some of what she's written there answers um, Dr. Lois Maduva's question. Um, she writes that she's from Emmanuel University of Oradea in Romania, 
where they're currently working on establishing one of the first music therapy training course programs in Romania in collaboration with the University of the West of England in Bristol, UK. And her question is about how do you provide student supervision for the clinical placements in situations where there are no available music therapists locally. So I think there are some ways of thinking about that that Paul Pan has addressed, and I'm sure many ways forward, especially with our new online systems, um, but also drawing on, on other professionals and making sure the music therapy um, is provided well in the vision. So um, I'm sure that she'd be happy to discuss that further. So I'm gonna hand back to you, Kira, now for the next question. Yeah, so another question for Paul Pan was, what issues, if any, did you face when setting up the training course and how did you resolve them? And Paul Pan says, the most challenging issue that she is currently facing is the balance between the time and the workload that she has. And I think many people can relate to that. Um, she says she, um, honestly, I don't have a completed solution yet to the issue of managing workload and time. She says that the ideal solution would be to have at least one more music therapist to help with teaching and managing the programme. Uh, she says she doesn't just currently work on the MA in music therapy programme, but she also has other workloads from the undergraduate degrees in music and postgraduate degrees in music education. And she says that a main strategy to cope with this issue is to involve lecturers from other faculties, help her with the admission processes, teaching, clinical supervision and CC supervision. Um, she also says that another challenge she faces is her limited experience um, with training music therapy students. She says that she has regular contact with other music therapy lectures in both Mehidol University and Chilla Longhorn University. And she says that she also consults with uh, Amelia Oldfield, who has long experience of training music therapy students. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to continue because we've still got more questions and uh, people prepared them and, and she also wrote her answers. So um, I'm going to go back to um, another question, which was, can you summarize the main differences between the new training in Thailand and the master's music therapy training at ARU, which she didn't undertake, but she was a PhD student in ARU. Um, but that was the question. The main difference between the programme at ARU and KKU is music therapy course in KKU is a multidisciplinary programme where there are lecturers from medicine, nursing, education and dentistry working together to develop the programme with me as the music therapist. Therefore, this programme collaborates knowledge and skills from healthcare staff such as neuroscience, holistic care, non-technical skills to develop skills on communication, to develop leadership, teamwork, communication skills to effectively communicate to the clients in various backgrounds for their well-being. I suppose I would add that um, many music therapy courses do embed um, planning and work both with participants um, that's very important, actually, getting their advice just for people who are who are new to the field here, um, but also do collaborate with um, other professionals who, um, and certainly at ARU, neuroscience scientists and psychotherapists and other psychologists and allied health professionals are quite involved in the training. Um, but, uh, but this varies across the world. Coming back to uh, the questions that were prepared, I'm going to hand back to Kira, and then there'll be one more to follow. So if you've got any yourselves that you think we can answer or ones you want us to pass on to Paul and Pan, um, do use the Q&A for that while we're discussing these next questions. Over to you, Kira. So this question relates to the future plans of Porn Pan and the music therapy training course. So she says at the moment she doesn't have a very long term plan, 
and that she is focusing on preparing everything to be ready for the admission process for when the term starts in July 2022. Says that she will start to prepare the outline for each module and that in some modules uh, she plans to invite lecturers from other faculties and also from other universities to give lectures. She says that it's important to give enough time for guest lecturers to prepare their lesson plans. So yes, um, just working on the modules for the course, that is the plans of course. Yes, and I, I was just going to note while I've been listening that, um, that Paul Pan discussed in her actual lecture that the approval process is going on, which is very usual for any, um, especially, well, any level training in a university and if it's a clinical training, for example, in the UK, there's a, um, a registration with the Health and Care Professions Council that's needed. Um, and that sometimes courses have to announce that they are going to begin. That's happened to many trainings um, pending approval. So I was just thinking about that. She said she hoped that would be forthcoming. Um, I'm just ignoring a phone line um, that's ringing. I um, hope that didn't um, shut out any sound from the comment. And just to finish, and we'll see if you've got any other points to raise in the chat or in Q&A. Um, there's a question here, which was, what do you think the future of music therapy might look like in Thailand? And her answer to this is, the community of music therapists will get bigger and easier to access music therapy services. It'll be easier to access music therapy services because there'll be more music therapists working outside Bangkok. Um, interestingly, I would reflect that that was similar in the UK. There were only trainings in London and then um, trainings were developed in Bristol and then in Cambridge and then in all the, many other counties um, across the UK and also in Scotland and Ireland and Wales. So um, this is very important and it's interesting she's got that vision there. Um, as I aim to regularly communicate, this is going back to Paul Pan's answer. As I aim to regularly communicate with the other training courses in Thailand so that music therapists working on the different courses or different facilities as well as students can support each other and learn from one another. She aims to do that regularly by working together with the course leaders and other music therapists. I hope that the music therapy profession can be more established in Thailand soon. And there might be people here who want to make comments who are already involved in, in tra other trainings in Thailand. I can think of one or two looking at the um, attendees or people with more knowledge than I might have about the specifics who want to comment because we've got six minutes left. Um, I'll just finish by saying that we've had a series this semester that, that's been quite different um, where we've we focused on alumni from our university who've um, developed services in other countries. So this is the third one in the field um, of um, research and training. So are there any other questions or comments from people in the audience or from you, Kira? I just see that Tanapan has raised um, a hand. Ah, yes. Can you bring Chan Chanapan in? We will also see Nina Wallersberg has put a discussion point as well in response. Mm -hmm. Are we able to invite Chanapan in, who is a drama therapy research student? Yes. Uh, who's also under, from Thailand and has worked there. Hello. Hello, hi. Oh, great. Welcome, hi, Chanapan. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yes, okay, so yeah, I'm really looking forward for this lecture and um, 
just want to add on something from from my experience because I found uh, Pon Pan's um, program that she tried to set up is very interesting. And maybe I, I can just help her to answer a little bit of question that I heard so far. Um, because at the moment in Thailand, we try to gather not only music therapists, but all in um, the therapists in art, in art, uh, working with art, like drama therapy, the drama therapy, art therapy, uh, movement therapy as well. We all come together in order to like uh, register this profession with the Depart Department of Health in Thailand. So it's, it's kind of thing that's um, it's a long journey. But I think what Pon Pan just have done is about to set up, uh, make it solid in the education field, which is going to be easy part to, to the cause to be recognized by the Department of Health uh, later on. Um, and uh, even though we have a group of uh, small therapists, but I think uh, we seem to have like a very close connection. Uh, many students like a commute to, to Bangkok on the weekend to do the placement. And some of them, they do like online supervision for the placement as well. And uh, Kongen is about three hours by car, I think, or an hour by plane um, to Bangkok. So that's, you know, mostly like they, they can commute easily or stay over the weekend. I think the university will provide things that can serve a benefit to the student. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Chalapan. It's, it's that's really valuable. Great that you joined us. Um, I know that time is running out now, so I'm just checking. I think that um, we probably should move to any notices um, that Kira might have. For you all but I'd like to wish you all a safe um, time and if you're having a seasonal break um, all the best for that um, to all of you and to thank everyone for coming from all over the world but I know that um, Kira will probably announce our future program. Mm -hmm. Yes and um, thanks Chanapan as well for that um, so just a reminder that after the webinar you will be sent a survey It'd be great to hear back from all of you with some feedback to inform our future events. And also we would be delighted to have you to join us for our next webinar in 2022. And that is on the 17th of January. And that will be with Dr. Martin Hartman and also Dr. Jaco Erkula from Finland. And they'll present um, a webinar about musical interaction in improvisational integrative music therapy for depression treatment. And you will be sent more information about this from Simpa and the link to register in the follow-up email. So we hope to see you all in the next webinar and just like to wish everyone a happy holiday and happy new year 2022 and hopefully see you all next year. So thank you. Bye everyone. Thanks very much Kira and to the team and to Porn Pan in your absence. Um, and we'll see you all next year. Bye-bye.